After a temporary hiatus during the COVID-19 pandemic, the highly anticipated Rwanda Day event brought together thousands of Rwandans and friends of Rwanda to reflect on the country's development and align with its growth agenda. Join us as we take you through the special moments that made Rwanda Day 2024 quite memorable. Washington DC in the USA played host to this year's Rwanda Day event. Despite the low temperatures, the excitement was palpable, the handshakes a little firmer, and the hugs longer and lingering as Rwandans and friends of Rwanda from different parts of the globe gathered for what has become one of the most looked forward to events by Rwandans in the diaspora. The unique event offers opportunities to network, build partnerships and interact with Rwanda's president, Paul Kagame. The people came loaded with expectation. We are really looking for investment in house and there is a lot of opportunities in house. So I'm very, very excited for this day because of being able to connect with different people and being able to connect opportunities. Basically connecting resources in terms of technology, finances, expertise. You can be able to link both and be able to do something great for Rwanda and for Africa. Uh, looking forward to network with the leaders from Rwanda. Uh, network with businessmen and see what we can do together here in the US or in Rwanda and also meet the youth, mentor the youth and do what we can do to the youth to help them especially in the careers. And I'm here at Rwanda Day to hear the stories of real Rwandans and how they've taken their country together from the dark days of 1994 to what is now uh, an exemplar. Uh, a shining light that we can all aspire to. We are already connected to Rwanda, so we have land, we have properties, we have bank accounts, so we are already doing business in Rwanda. So as a diaspora community, so we need to know how we can continue, you know, contributing to the development of our country while as well we benefit from it. Because we are already there, although we live abroad, but we are still participating in what's happening in our country. From the first time that I got an opportunity to learn about Rwanda and then visit in 2014, it has become like a second home to me and my family. Um, being able to hear the story of Rwanda, the story of reconciliation, and to be able to share that not only with my family, but with anyone that I get into contact with, it is such a great example to be able to follow. Themed Rwanda, a legacy of inclusiveness within and beyond our borders, the main event kicked off with interesting panel discussions touching on various topics ranging from the economy, security, health, among others. And she told me, my supervisor, what did you get as a scientist? What do you get in those names I gave you? So Lincoln Memorial, Thomas Jefferson Memorial, Washington Monument. She told me to do this America had names big names, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman, and she told me, in order to do it in Rwanda, you need a name. And she told me, you have a name actually, Paul Kagame. <laughs> she told me in Rwanda, in the last, of course today, in the last 30 years, you have a name and that name will help you to, it has helped you to build what you have already built but that name will continue to help you to build even the generations to come so there is always a name in the developed country I think about Rwanda day itself um, the fact that you know there's this new tradition of going outside of the borders bringing the community together um, talking about and bringing the friends of Rwanda together, as the minister was talking about the, uh, the um, ability to showcase uh, what's happening in Rwanda so that more visitors will come, so that more um, investors will come to the country as well, and also to reconnect with those Rwandans who are living abroad. And so I think that this intentionality, um, this, this vision, this leadership, and this fidelity to self and self-determination is a key to why 
in 30 years, in, in, in Rwanda at 30, uh, there's been such remarkable achievement. Last year, 2023, diaspora around the world sent 470 million US dollars to Rwanda as remittances. And that is more than you know, all aid combined. Buffett and Gate and the World Bank and USAID, they all combine. We, are, we can actually do even more. Then I was chatting with uh, someone from the uh, big car here. And then I asked, like, what, is, what is really happening in Rwanda? Why we are not sending more money? I think the government needs to do more to remove a lot of fees. And then the second, we as diaspora, we need to invest more in our country. Because we live in America, we work and we are paid in dollar. We have access to cheap capital here. You can actually get a loan for, you know, six, seven percent. I hope they are fixing inflation and it will go down a little bit. And then send money and invest in Rwanda and our bank can lend it to 13, 14, 15. So let's just think about going beyond the remittances. We all do world remit, etc. We send money to our friends. Like we are on WhatsApp, not to tanga contribution, Yamakwe, Yibirio, Yo Setra Bioheres. But let's try to think a little bit beyond that. Can we have an account? Can you think about retirement? Kongewins are retiring. Masaka, Changwa, Ibutari. That home, we need to think more about that, like sending even more money to do bigger things. So. President of the Toronto Raptors, Masai Ujiri, spoke about the importance of supporting and promoting the business of sports, while the new CEO of NBA Africa, Claire Akamanzi, emphasized on the need to leverage the opportunities that lie in Africa. In Africa, we treat sports as leisure, and we haven't yet seen sports as a business. We still treat it as leisure and competition. And competition is great. Competition is what we want. But the opportunity that God has given me as a son of Africa to play basketball as a youth and to come to school in the States and to be in the position that I am, I see it. And I know what investments are made in sports and entertainment. So, I'm going to tell you a story. In 2016, um, I invited um, the first family to the All-Star Game in Toronto. It was unbelievable. Everybody, this incredible arena we have where I work, Kobe Bryant, Drake, everybody, Steph Curry, anybody that you can think of was there. One of the best dunk contests that's ever been held. Okay? It was one of the coldest days in Toronto ever. And so His Excellency came, he sat down, and he was consuming, he was watching, and he put his head down. And we were inside the suite. And my wife, and Ange Kagame, came to me and she said, go check on His Excellency. And I thought maybe because of the cold he was sick or something. And I went to him and I said, Excellency, is everything okay? And he said, yes. And he put his head down. <laughs> I talked like him, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's my guy. <laughs> that's my guy. And he says, yes. <laughs> Masai, can you tell me how much it costs to build an arena like this? <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> that arena is the arena you saw in the video, correct? Visionary. Yeah, visionary. Visionary, I say it again. 
Yes. He didn't only think of that arena. He thought about the stadium. He thought about the ecosystem around it. Okay? Sports business, sports medicine, restaurants, anything you can think of, hotels. All those things are that ecosystem. And while the rest of the world is aging, Africa is young. We have young people, we have youthful energy. And if any business is thinking about talent, thinking about skills, thinking about driving productivity, consumption, the consumer for the future, there's no way you can avoid Africa. And that's why NBA Africa chose, uh, the NBA chose to settle in Africa as well. But I think Masai did talk about excellence that Africa shows on the world stage. I think that's very true. 50 players in the NBA today are from Africa, either directly from Africa or one of their parents was born in Africa. 50 players, that's 10% of NBA. In fact, the reigning MVP, the most valuable player today, is Joel Embiid from Cameroon. I think that's an example of African excellence. But we don't see African excellence only in sports. We talk about sports and entertainment. If you look at African music on the world stage today, if you look at the arenas that Banner Boy can fill in New York, in London, if you look at the collaborations, you look at Chris Brown uh, uh, playing with Davido, you look at our very own uh, Bruce Melody with Shaggy on the world stage. That is African excellence. And it's not just in sports or music, but we see it in fashion. If you go to Paris or Milan, today you see African fashion. If you look at art, Today, the 11 art pieces from Africa that have sold for $1 million and more. That is Africa's excellence on the world stage. The 11th edition of Rwanda Day was held at a time when the country will be marking various historic events, including the general elections and the commemoration of 30 years of rebuilding and rising from the ashes since the tragic events of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. The Rwandans in the United States of America, who are comprised of 29 association, associations, were able to mobilize hundreds and thousands of you here now and those that are watching online. And we welcome you to this opportunity to see and hear Rwanda at 30 and its accomplishments and the gains. And Your Excellency, much was said today and we are expecting to hear even more inspirational words from you. But one thing that we have realized that Rwanda at 30, Rwandans, young and old, chose and decided to band together to build a nation. And today, the many Rwandans in the United States have, and I urge them again, that let us continue to band together to build the Rwanda we choose by beginning with the communities where we live because it matters and the homeland is looking at us to do exactly that. I'm proud to say for this pe period I've been here as the leader of this Rwandan diaspora around here in the United States, we are mobilized, we are grateful, and we have chosen it will continue to choose, and soon and very soon, we spoke about uh, last evening with a team of Rwandans who are leading out. After they've done this mobilization, they have decided to go into their communities and mobilize so that young people who are able to vote later this year, they too can choose to reelect His Excellency when that time comes. This excitement better turn into votes because you are about to choose a Rwanda you want, a Rwanda you choose, will be, be dependent on you, and let's get our young people to indeed preserve their gains because you are Rwandan. Then came the moment that everyone was waiting for. The entry of President Paul Kagame into the room was loudly celebrated as Rwandans chanted his name. In his address, the president highlighted Rwanda's journey for the past 30 years. 
Our journey has been uh, quite long and uh, trying, uh, difficult. But that's the beauty of it, uh, that we are where we are through those, those difficulties. We have endured, we have survived. We want to do just as much to be better human beings, to be where we want to be. Some people in other parts of the world have taken for granted we will be there, no matter what. <clears throat> this is what we said from the beginning. Thirty years ago, now we're covering thirty years since uh, the worst tragedy in our country. but we believed. We wanted to live our lives, even so many lost theirs. And we promised ourselves. You know, uh, there is this, I think people say, that uh, lightning does not strike twice in the same place. Doesn't strike the same place twice. Maybe. But for me, I want to be on the safe side. I would rather make sure and prepare for a situation where Rwanda that was struck once badly in 94 will not be struck again. The head of state emphasized the need for speed while working in unity. I've also heard people say, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go and reach far, you have to go together. You know, I want us to go together but I want us to go fast and reach far, both of them. I don't think there is any contradiction. You can go far and fast at the same time. That's what our situation compels us to do, and we must must think like that, must be able to do things and move fast, but want to go far at the same time. And we really have ourselves either to blame or, or to thank for succeeding. Nobody else. Don't, don't blame if Rwanda has failed, don't start looking for excuses and say, you know, somebody somewhere, and then you start talking about colonial times, you start talking about, no, no, no. Those are over, behind us. So, so don't, don't, uh, 
Let's not use an excuse. Just outside the auditorium, exhibitors showcased different Rwandan products, offering many Rwandans in the diaspora a chance to buy their favorite products and also partner in their various businesses. But also taking my business here because I feel like there are a lot of times people want, and we do ship worldwide, but people want to have our products, but they, they maybe can have access to it. So me coming to them was really a big thing for me. See, it's, it's amazing the beauty of social media, the beauty of how the world is so connected. There's, there are people I've never met, people who've only seen me and they're like, oh, Sonia Mugawo, this, I like that dress, I saw this dress. And uh, I did make great sales, which is part of the reason why I'm here, but also validating what, what I'm doing. And as HE said, you know, you can make a difference in different sectors in, you know, as long as you're putting Rwanda ahead. So for me, it's putting Rwanda on the fashion map. Uh, during the visits on our stand, we actually noticed that uh, life assurance here is uh, has really taken strides. They understand and they're very excited actually that we have such products back home. So what we are actually discussing right now as we were picking feedback and uh, discussing to them as they visited our stand is to know what are those uh, synergies and partnerships that we can foster together but also um, uh, get to know uh, regarding to the innovation side of it. What else can we do like having them be part of what we are having in Rwanda and be able to also be part and parcel just like we are having um, different developments in different sectors so same as life assurance and of course insurance in general we're very excited that we got a chance to speak uh, hear from them and also do part of our strategy that we love uh, moving from where we are to meet our customers and now it's not only meeting them within the country but meeting them uh, out of the borders of our country but also still meeting our very own so it's, it, it was really exciting and we're happy has been uh, very good, if I can say excellent, uh, but they have been struggling to access this product when they are here. So we are coming purposely for this, uh, for this particular point. We are coming here to establish uh, relationships, distributorships, set uh, a good flow of the product uh, in distribution. We already are, have registered on Amazon and we are informing them that they can have now this product freshly from Kigali to USA through their fam uh, famous online shop, which is Amazon, but also we have uh, happy, happened to get also uh, very good prospects who have uh, confirmed their uh, interest. We are looking into details of the contracts and the agreements that we can move forward with the business. The beautiful day culminated in food and music as Rwandans in the diaspora and friends of Rwanda danced the night away to the soulful tunes of different Rwandan artists.